Hey, it's Juliet with Giddy Up Art Studio. If you're visiting Austin, Texas in the spring or summer, you have to set aside some time at dusk to watch the Mexican free-tailed bats emerge from the Ann W. Richards Congress Avenue Bridge. It's amazing. Let's learn more about the bats by drawing them. Let's get started. Remember, you can pause the video at any time. I start with a pencil drawing and I draw very lightly. First, I draw a medium-sized oval. Then I draw a wide U-shape for the head. Next, I add two ears. An arc line at the top and an arc line at the bottom forms the ear shape. Finally, I add the tail. Their tail sticks out past their wing membrane. Next, the wings. From the top of the oval, draw a V shape so that you can see one line is longer than the other. Connect the top of the V with an arced line. Repeat this on both sides of the bat. Next, from the end of your V's, draw curved lines like hills. Bat's wings are like a human arm and hand, except for it has a thin membrane of skin extending between the hand and the body between each of the finger bones. The thumb extends out of the wing like a small claw, which the bat uses to climb up the trees and other structures. Bats can move their wings like a hand, essentially swimming through the air. Just below the thumb claws, make a dot. Then, between that dot and the end of the arced line, draw another dot. These dots indicate where the bat's fingers will connect and where their wing membrane will cover. Draw two legs on the bottom of the oval on either side of the tail. Now it's time to connect the dots. Bats have what people call a hand wing. To connect your wings, start a little ways up the tail. Draw arced lines between the tail and the legs. Then, from the leg to where the fifth finger in its hand wing is. Then, from the fifth finger to where the fourth finger is. And finally, connect the fourth finger to where the third and the second finger reside. Now draw the fingers. From where the thumb starts, draw double width lines all the way to where the dots end. You can see all the fingers in this wing. Fifth, fourth, third, second, thumb. Time to draw the Mexican free tail bat's face. In the center of its head, I draw two small circles and darken them all around. This indicates its nose. Then for its mouth, I draw a little hill that starts below the nose, touches the center of the nose, and then back down. Draw two round eyes, leaving white space on one side. The inside of the Mexican free tail bat's ears are textured. I draw lines down from the top. Bats are the only mammals to truly fly, so this Mexican free-tailed bat is covered in fur. Draw some shaggy lines around it to indicate that it is furry. The Mexican free-tailed bats winter in Mexico and travel to Austin each year to make a summer home under the famous bridge. They help make Austin and our world a better place to be. In June, when populations are the highest, there can be up to 1.5 million bats leaving their bridge roosts to eat 10 to 20,000 pounds of insects a night. I like that when I teach my students and children something, they learn the basic shapes and lines, and after a little practice, they feel empowered to add their own flair and creative ideas. Here are the ideas that these students came up with right after learning the basic shapes. This is what I remember seeing the bats. I remember they were really small and it was dark. And we saw them fly off and there were millions we saw. The important thing to do is to experiment and have fun. For more ideas and information, visit giddyupartstudio.com. Yeah!